Another day on the farm. The goats are my favorite, but don't tell the chickens. Farm living can seem like a dream, but what's the reality? It's not all cute animals and fresh air. There is a lot of hard work and you need to turn a profit. So before you leave the city to head to the farm, don't act too fast. Lifestyle changes take careful consideration and they don't happen overnight. It all starts with careful research and planning. Take Goldshaw Farm. They didn't just buy 60 acres and a couple of chickens to chase their rural dreams. They spent months learning about the lifestyle they wanted, checking out the farms, and learning everything they could. I'm Gabe Bolt, here to show you the small shifts that you can make in your life that will lead to a huge impact in your financial future. This is Big Change. Life on the farm isn't just about getting back to nature, it's also a business. And shopping for both a mortgage for your farmhouse and a business loan to start buying equipment can really complicate your credit. But it's true, banks or other mortgage lenders perform a hard pull on your FICO score whenever you apply for a mortgage, business loan, auto loan, or any loan. Applying for other large loans while applying for a mortgage will impact your DTI. That's your debt to income ratio and what you're qualified for. There are thousands of different scenarios and everyone's potential situation is different. But the best practice when starting a small business is to start getting ready early. That's exactly what Morgan and Allison of Goldshaw Farm made sure to do before hopping over to the homestead. They researched the lifestyle, saved up, and are now happy to get their hands dirty very dirty, on their Vermont farm, they're still early on their journey and have big changes in store for the future. But they're planning for them now. Hey, Morgan, thanks for jumping on with me today. Well, thanks for having me. This is going to be a great conversation. Let's start from the beginning. What made you decide to move from the city into rural life? But my wife and I, we were, we were living like right in Capitol Hill, right in the thick of DC. and. There was this certain tipping point where we suddenly started to realize, okay, well, we loved living in the city for a good long while. I think it's time to get out. We both grew up in suburbia, so we, we really wanted to, to move more rural and, and find a farm. How long was that planning process of, you know, moving from the city, kind of that whole decision to kind of make the leap? It, it started, you know, three years before we actually took the leap. And it starts in that phase where you're kind of just talking about what you want out of life and what you'd want from a home and an environment to live in, what you'd want from like a work situation perspective. And you start there, then you start to do this, like, you know, kind of researching phase where whether you're visiting places and visiting people and seeing how other people are living and see how other things are set up, or you're going online and you're cruising like through the real estate websites and looking at properties and saying, hey, could this fit me? Would this ever work for me? Before you ultimately start to get to that place where you're starting to take action and visiting places and very seriously considering, hey, am I gonna buy this property and make this leap? So did you know a lot about running a farm as a small business before you got started? At my heart and, and really what have sort of always motivated me, inspired me is, has been to be an entrepreneur. And so when I had this idea of, hey, I wanna to try to start a farm, it was very much focused on saying, how do I start this small business that's based around agriculture? Not necessarily just, hey, I wanna live on a farm just, just purely for the lifestyle. I think that's a big dream for a lot of people is trying to get out of that corporate nine to five thing and find you know freedom through having your own thing. For some people, I know it's definitely the case for me, that opportunity to really create and build something and, and, and you know manifest something that's in your head and see it come to life, that is just such an incredibly rewarding feeling. And I think that motivates a lot of people. Absolutely, and I've seen that with your channel, so I'm sure it's also the same with your farming, but you can see your creativity coming out and your passion in the videos, and then I'm sure that translates a lot to the, to the farm as well. Oh, definitely. I, mean, I think you can work so much harder when you truly believe in something and love something. Mm. And, and that also just becomes really rocket fuel for, for your creativity and your passion. So what are some of your favorite parts about working on the farm? The, the energy that comes from seeing the animals and working with the animals, it just gets me going like each and every day. And so, so that's probably my favorite thing. I think the other thing that I absolutely love and have only really started to appreciate it in the last few months is that over time, you're gonna build something. 
You know, that first year or two that you move out to a property that you try to establish something, whether you're just doing a homestead or a farm or a renovation, you're so in the middle of chaos and you see so many things that need to be done. You almost get this feeling of feeling overwhelmed. But now as we're really into the midst of the third year that we're here, or actually fourth year that we're here, I see progress. I can look back at photos from two, three years ago and say, wow, I remember when it was like that and now look at where it is. It's like that compound effect of you put in all this groundwork and then eventually things just, you start to see everything finally after a year. Oh yeah, no, and, and I think one of the things that happens, right, is you have this, this mindset of, well, if I just get this project done, or if I just get this project done, and you s sort of assume that you're gonna come to a point where you get over the hump, and it's gonna get better. But the truth is it never does. Recognize there's always gonna be more. There's always gonna be more things you wanna do, always new challenges, which in and of itself can be really inspirational. But then also when you look backwards and you see how far you've come and see what, what progress has been there, that too is just something that can get you so motivated to keep going at it. Absolutely, yeah, that's really cool. So how much research did you do on farms as a small business? Oh, a ton, you know, so I, I grew up in suburbia. I have no agricultural background whatsoever, but I have worked in the business world. And so there was this combination of researching farms and how do farms work and meeting farmers and talking to farmers, whether I was just at a farmer's market or going to visit somewhere and doing that helped give me some background and insight. And then I think the other big thing that it was, was actually really looking at sort of businesses in general and thinking about startups and how do you bring that mindset to what you do on a farm. And so those were two big rabbit holes that I leaped down from a researching perspective that had nothing to do with raising animals or growing trees or anything like that. It was just purely thinking about the business management side of it. When you were diving down those rabbit holes, were there any resources that were super helpful for you? Watching videos and watching other content creators are super important. I think also though building relationships and the daily chit chat conversations you have when you're buying your groceries for that week, you know, talking to those farmers and then actually asking about what they do and how their farm works and then even getting a chance to sometimes get invited to go there. That was huge. That was such an important resource. You know, I think podcasts play into it and then reading always is an important tool for like getting background and getting technical details. Yeah, absolutely agree. So when you're running the farm, you talked about the business and the hands-on work, how much time is spent on the business and how much time is spent on the actual farm work itself? What's the split there? Um, you know, it sort of depends on what time of year it is, but I would say this time of year, it's probably about 50-50. People have this vision of the farm is just about growing the food and working with the animals. But if you want to actually have a successful farm business, being able to market and sell your product is arguably the biggest barrier that you have. You know, you think about the stereotypes, right? Of like the big old traditional farmer with the big old tractor who does fields and fields of corn or wheat or whatever. That's starting to shift where people who are farmers are moving from being really price takers where you're going to a commodity market and you're really reliant on whatever that set commodity price is versus price makers where you're marketing and selling your own products. And when you do that, it actually creates a great new opportunity for you as the farmer, but it also forces you as the farmer to do work that's not necessarily traditional farming work. Speaking of tractors, I saw that you got a tractor uh, <laughs> recently, so congrats on that. Um, Large Marge. <laughs> yeah. A tractor, like one we got, it's like, you know, $50,000, $60,000 purchase. How do you think about doing something like that that's worth more than my car <laughs> and I'm gonna buy this and do this? How does that financially make any sense whatsoever? And it took me having to grow the farm to a certain point where it said, okay, then that, now it's profitable. And so having again, that strong business case to say it makes sense for you, then it's also starting to say, well, how will I do it? Will I finance it? Um, will I save up cash and do it? You know, are there trade-offs when it comes to it and, and researching and talking to experts and like getting some feedback there, talking to your accountant and thinking about things like depreciation. You really do need to kind of go through each of those steps, but then it became kind of, I felt very much empowered and I felt very ready to take that leap, which was for me as somebody again, who had no experience with tractors and is kind of a mechanical moron. <laughs> like It was having that information that gave me the confidence to take that leap. Doing the math really alleviates the fear once you start to understand it and you spend so much time you know, researching it kind of eliminates that scary part for a lot of people. As you become an adult and as you start to really, you know, solidify your status of going from, you know, college age to, you know, having a full on career or doing other things, you start to realize that people don't have things as figured out as you used to think they did. 
And, and you know, the, the barrier to entry to doing a lot of things, whether it's renting properties or buying a tractor, isn't nearly as scary as you might think it is if you just take the time to do some research and demystify it. So to kind of wrap this up, what would be one thing that you wish you knew before you started this whole journey? I think that the biggest thing that I wish I, I had in my mind back before I started would have been, number one, to don't rush it. Make sure you do your research, make sure you know what you're getting into, make sure you have a sense of what you want out of things. And, and, and really take your time with that. Because I think if you rush into something, you can find you, you will blow yourself up, whether you don't have a business case that works for you and financially it's gonna be unsustainable, or number two, you might like hate the lifestyle even though you dreamed of loving it. And so, you know, really take your time to wade in the water. I definitely agree. Starting slow is really great advice and it's easy to kind of get ahead of yourself when you're chasing your dreams. But thank you for the tips and your time. It was great talking to you today. Great chat with you, Gabe. I love the way they approach their home and farm as a business that's constantly evolving. It's so smart how they're planning now for their long-term big projects. Farm living isn't just about getting your hands dirty and breathing fresh air. As Morgan just said, a farm is also a business, which means being diligent with the paperwork and knowing how to make the most out of small business loans. Being able to finance big projects is important. Business or personal, the importance of a good credit score when applying for a loan cannot be overstated. Can a business loan hurt or help your credit score? The answer is complicated. If you, as a sole proprietor or a partner in your business, personally guarantee your small business loan, it can impact your credit score. If your business fails to make its payments, the lender of your business loans can try to collect the missing dollars from you personally. This makes you a co-signer on your business loan, but it also means that the debt can show up on your credit report. If you rely on business credit cards to fund your small business, you can again impact your personal credit score. This is especially true if you operate as a sole proprietor because your business and personal credit will be the same. If you wanna keep your business and personal credit separate, you don't wanna work as a sole proprietor. Instead, incorporate into an LLC, an S corporation, or a C corporation. This way, your business loans and your business credit will not impact your personal credit score. Farm life, bakery, bed and breakfast. If you go for a mortgage and a business loan, just know that exciting times are ahead and it is not for the faint of heart. Whatever you do, take notes from the Shaws and plan ahead. Me, I'm not ready to jump into farm life just yet, but my simple first step and yours is to ask yourself, what is my dream lifestyle and am I ready for it? Take a look at people who have gone down that path and assess if you're financially secure enough to make big lifestyle changes. Learn more about financing options for your home and your small business over at rockethq.com learn. Thanks again to Morgan from Goldshaw Farm. And if you guys want more big change, don't forget to like and subscribe.